Helldivers 2 has taken the internet by swarm. And since its release, it's stirred up a lot of debate between the left and right about its obvious inspiration. Starship Troopers. Now, Starship Troopers is one of my favorite movies of all time, and after some thought, Paul Verhoeven might even be my favorite director. There's just a certain charm to his cheesy, dystopic sci-fi adventures, the triumphant orchestral scores, the old-school practical effects, the barbaric violence, the outrageous plot lines and political satire, and of course, the endless quotability. Your move, creep. I'd buy that for a dollar. Consider that a divorce. The enemy cannot push a button if you disable his hand. Come on, you hey! You wanna live forever? Now, as many have pointed out, the source material by Robert A. Heinlein was a much more straightforward political essay describing the history and philosophy of Federation society. Some of which does make its way into the film adaptation, like this classroom scene where Michael Ironside is describing the perceived failure of liberal democracy. Why are only citizens allowed to vote? It's a reward. What the Federation gives you for doing federal service. No. no. Something given has no value. But when you vote, you are exercising political authority. You're using force. And force, my friends, is violence. The supreme authority from which all other authority is derived. This idea that something given has no value. And therefore, people neglected what a high responsibility the vote holds. The vote carries authority. And all authority is ultimately derived from violent force. This is unironically true, and in light of this truth, the Federation does not treat voting as a right, but rather a responsibility, which must be earned through military service. Now today, I won't be delving any further into the politics of the novel. As Paul Verhoeven stated, he never even bothered to read it himself. But I would like to respond to the commentary buzzing about from the right and left-wing circles on the net. The right-wingers don't realize they're the butt of the joke again. The communists are identifying with literal insects again. So, this begs the question. Did Paul Verhoeven successfully satirize a fascist government with Starship Troopers? Well, no. Fascism is a far-right authoritarian dictatorship that forcibly suppresses opposition and forces strict control of the economy and typically espouses racial hierarchy. However, none of these seem to be present in Starship Troopers. There is no supreme leader, authority figures are voted out or simply resign upon lack of confidence. Everyone has a right to serve in the Federation and earn the privilege to vote, and their society seems to have achieved genuine racial and gender social equality. In truth, Starship Troopers only appears to be a satire of fascism at face value because of those drip-ass uniforms. However, I would say it is an effective satire of militarism and colonialism. It's clear early on that there is a heavy propaganda arm in the Federation media. These have always been some of my favorite inserts in the film. This part is the most heavy-handed, and I love it for that. <laughs> This propaganda is necessary to keep a constant line of volunteers serving as cannon fodder for the Federation. You look at every person who has proudly served, and each of them are horribly disfigured, either missing a limb, or multiple, suffering horrific acid burns, or being straight up devoured by bugs. Seriously, these people are pumped through the ranks faster than your local Sonic drive-in. Do you get me? We got you, sir! The main crux of the right-wing position here, that the Federation did nothing wrong, stems from the position that the bugs were in fact responsible for the assault on Buenos Aires. But, was this an assault at all? The only good bug is a dead bug. Your basic arachnid warrior isn't too smart, but you can blow off a limb... <laughs> It gets smart. Insect that with intelligence? Have you ever met one? I can't believe I am hearing this nonsense. You just this wait is the most a ridiculous moment, conversation I've At this point, the Federation is convinced that the arachnids are just dumb, mindless insects. 
They would have no reason to believe that the bugs had the intellectual or physical capacity to accurately launch an asteroid toward Earth across the entire stretch of the galaxy. In fact, we the audience can know with almost certainty that isn't what occurred. Carmen changed the automated course of the fleet ship she was piloting, unwittingly striking an asteroid in the process. This is implied to be the asteroid which would unfortunately touch down in Buenos Aires, leading to the start of the war. Considering how far from Earth this asteroid was, the fact it did hit Earth in the end means there's no way that would have been its original trajectory. So, it would appear to me that one of two scenarios is likely true. Either the Federation's ignorance and arrogance led them to believe that the bugs were both simultaneously responsible for the asteroid and a brainless enemy which would be easily conquered. But what I take to be more likely, the Federation used this asteroid as a false flag to justify a war with the insects. A war they genuinely did not believe that the bugs were capable of instigating in such a way, which led to them being totally unprepared at the first drop on Clendathu and underestimating their enemy's strength and intellect. Incoming! So, while I think Verhoeven failed miserably in his attempt to satirize fascism, I think one can reasonably draw a lot of similarities between the Federation's war with the Arachnids with the likes of the Vietnam War and the War on Terror, particularly in Iraq and Afghanistan. The way the US used false threats and narratives to excuse a military invasion. The way the media used propaganda to dehumanize our enemy and rally the public behind the government's cause. And the way we glorify service to a war machine that's generally apathetic to our lives and self-interested in its own power and expansion. So yes, maybe the right is missing the point when they see the Federation as a virtuous society the West should strive for. And maybe the left is missing the point about what fascism actually is, and doesn't just mean fancy uniforms and attractive action heroes. But though they disagree on the why behind it, they are both correct when they say the Federation at least appears rad as fuck. We have the ships. We have the weapons. We need soldiers. We need you all. Service guarantees citizenship.